Hello, how are you? My name is Izzy Cardi, and I am going to interview today Brian Hughes, who is the bass player for Kayla. We are going to talk about performers and how they are dealing with the pandemic and quarantine. And we talk about their live concerts, the Kayla's live concerts. And as you can tell by the artwork that I personally did, uh, Wolfwalkers. So I hope you enjoy, and may I introduce to you Brian Hughes. <laughs> No problem. Uh, well, as you know, this is recorded. Are you okay to be recorded? Yeah, absolutely. I have, okay. I have my coffee. I'm, I'm in for the long run. No problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions and I hope you can answer them. Yeah, that's the idea. No problem. No okay. problem. Uh, first of all, um, do you want to introduce yourself to, to the audience here? The world. I am uh, Brian Hogan. I play bass, guitar, and I record uh, with Keela. And I, I generally play music for a living. Well, I used to, uh, but and that's what this is about, I think, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what else What else do you need to know? I'm not telling you my age. That's a, uh, uh, an assassination would be involved if that, was, if that was to be known. I can't tell the public. Right. Um, so... That, I guess my first question is, um, where were you when uh, the virus was spreading and um, when did you got the uh, So, uh, it all started around February, didn't it? I mean, or the end of January, February was all the news reports and all that. Um, anyway, we were doing a week residency in, uh, there's an Irish college in Paris yeah. and we were write, writing and recording. And uh, the day that the, we weren't really keeping, we knew there was a kind of, virus vibe going and uh like everyone else we didn't really realize how serious it was and um so we were literally uh there and uh, we got noted what we, were, we we heard one that the thursday morning whatever date it was um or wednesday that uh ireland was going to do a shutdown or lockdown and uh if that felt really weird being abroad and all that happening so we just uh more or less decided okay listen let's just go home because uh there's no point in staying here and i was actually worried about being stuck over there i didn't know how serious it was and uh you know so uh yeah we were in paris so we had to, we had to get home we went home that evening and uh you know uh from a technical point of view we had something like eight eight gigs uh within the next week because uh, around Paddy's Day we are always incredibly busy we were going to London we were going to go to do a gig in Paris and a couple of gigs in London and back to Ireland we had to do the Paddy's Day Festival and, and all sorts of other gigs we were going down to Kilkenny and all that sort of stuff and it uh, of course all got cancelled so um, we came home penniless oh. um, uh, well you know it's, 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 uh, that's life but it, not just us but, uh, so that's where we were yeah so did they, when you were in the airport, did they like um, say like a few questions or? Nothing. They, like, no. Absolutely nothing. I'll I tell you something, my my, uh, uh, my daughter who was in St. Louis there in, in Rath Mines, um, uh, her friend from school, they were doing like a, at Christmas, uh, people who can afford us the, uh, there's a tradition of, go, of going skiing in, in Italy. Uh, oh yeah, that, yeah. When you're in Spanish class, you normally that happened yeah. in my school too. That was cancelled too. Well, yeah, but they they all went in uh, January or February. February, I think it was. Oh. And they came back, and all the stuff was happening, and even all the news reports about uh, in north of Italy, there was a there was a huge crisis going on, and I can't remember what city it was, but uh, and uh, and then we were amazed because they no one was checked coming back through uh, from Ireland or from Italy to Ireland then. You know, they, they and they they really missed, dropped the ball there, I think, you know, um, because I uh, didn't know there was no checks. Her friend came straight back. I'm like, yeah, there was also uh, the, the Italian rugby match was cancelled, I think, in February. But all the fans mm -hmm. still came over. Like, all, and, and everyone knew that there was stuff going on in Italy. Now, not, not with Italians, but 
that's where there was a huge breakout of the virus and they, they haven't done they never did anything about it so i mean i'm amazed i would have done it. <laughs> i think they were very they were very afraid to to do anything in the airports to, to stop kind of um people coming so that's that's my feeling about it you know um you mentioned there that you were penniless when you came back um <laughs> <laughs> like i now I'm not saying so, like I'm not saying to you. I'm not saying that you're paying your throat now, but I'm saying. Um, Welcome to the world of musicians. Speaking for the band here, but um, I know this is lately. Why do you want to ask me? Go on. I know this. Uh, this is my next one. I know this lately in the news that um, that in COVID nineteen, uh, they did the payments there for um, performers like you and artists. Is that yep. is that working for you, or are you getting other payments? Um, like for or do you know? Uh, well, it's it's uh, it, it's not it's it's a very do you know something? I'll tell you the truth is that uh, if you're you frozen up, sorry. If uh, as someone asked me before, it, it, half the time my life is a bit like this in a way. If you're a freelance artist or musician, uh, there's a you get lean times and good times, you know, because that's just the way it works because it depends on how much work you get. And it's never hugely consistent, you know, in general, as far as I, I can see. I've been doing it a long time now. Uh, so uh, you, you make do and then you uh, you diversify. I've been very lucky. I uh, I record for the band. So I'm, I'm actually sitting here in a recording studio. So I've been able to do uh, soundtracks that we've been, uh, we were to, uh, asked to do uh, from before the, the, the COVID, and so we've I've done uh, I've done two, I've done two I think I've done one with Keila, and then I've done a uh, two outside of Keila. Uh, so it's it's uh, that that made me very busy. Um, so as I was saying, I'm lucky enough to be able to record a couple of things, and uh, we had some commissions in anyway, and I got some extra stuff because uh because I have it here in my in my uh, man cave attic above the house. <laughs> Um, so I can do that. Some some of the others can't do that, uh, which is unfortunate. But you, you just have to diversify. Um, the the I, I think the the Irish government came in pretty quickly with the COVID payment, which I, which helped everyone, and it was a, a great thing to actually do that first, ask questions later. You know, people were compl- worried about everyone's going to be on scamming it and all that, and I'm sure some were. But the the, the main idea was to make sure to try and make a bridge between when people were making money and weren't so I, I have to give them that I think that was a good quick and quick response so has it worked I don't know uh we'll have to see I uh you know my, anyone else my... say again do you know any other uh performers who's having the payment and and well work? every performer I know is on as far as I can see um it, it depends you have to downscale uh we had to do things like anyone who has a mortgage, we had to kind of um, uh, get that stopped at the, or at least delayed for a couple of months so that everyone can uh, uh, work stuff out. Um, it's, it's hard because it's, it's hard enough as it is in this business. Uh, it was a it was a help, do you know? And um, I can only say uh, it's... Uh, if it wasn't there, you'd feel it. Um, it, it, it. It's a help. That's all I can say. It's not. It's not a huge amount of money, and um, we had to pay tax on it anyway. So it's 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 not. It's kind of a loan, you know. Mm. Um, it's really weird when you're used to gigging, that there's no gigs. So uh, I think I've two wedding gigs booked in for uh, November next. That's the next gigs I can. I can <laughs> And that's that's just it, your life has to change. So, but that's that's it. You know, it, it could be it could be worse in my mind. You know. So, how are you sorry, finding doing school at home? Oh, where to begin? Uh, well, as you know, we're having second lockdown now. So, um, I guess when it first began, like in I guess around. Was it February? Mar- yeah, March, and um, it was uh, everyone was everywhere. But uh, and yeah. the second one is it's way better now because everyone knows what to do now. Yeah, that's the big thing, isn't it? it, 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 it yeah. If, you, if it's not a panic, you just figure a way how to do it. Um, I think it's uh, 
Yeah, it's harder for some people than it is for others. I, I, yeah, do you know something? I always think in uh, in my business anyway, you have to adapt one way or the other. You have to be versatile in in uh, oh, doing things. You know, and and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, you just have to adapt. I mean, as I said, I think being I'm kind of half, half freelance musician anyway, and that's what I had to do anyway. Right. Um, so I just had to adapt more. You know, that's 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 what I would say. Um, and, and, and gigs aren't really an option now, so uh, mm, yeah. I have to, like, you know, I'd be hunting out a bit more, uh, try and find other work with Keela or not, uh, in, uh, as in, in recording and soundtracks and things, you know, and also the Arts Council have been good. All right. Uh, well, my next question is, um, how yeah. is uh, how is Keela working together now during all this? During uh, kind of, uh, we're potentially doing a gig in March uh, in a, a large area that's, you know, socially distanced for a Paddy's Day mm-hmm. festival. Our fun I thought it was cancelled. It is the outdoor, but the, what they're, they're putting together kind of an online festival that people oh. can watch stuff and they're, they've they commissioned us to do a uh, a gig. Um, and we're trying to fi- figure out the logistics of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks like we were able to do it. And then, we, we, then we're uh, doing... A, another one with a cartoon saloon um where we'd be playing like like one of the gigs you went to uh that uh will involve uh, uh the Kenya animation festival yeah something like that so we, we, we'll be uh, playing along to um some of the film work uh mostly wolf walkers i think and then uh uh so we have to figure that one out and, and again we have to find an environment that's big enough to be social distance us and, and mm-hmm. figure that all that out so uh, you know Again, you just have to be inventive and find ways. There's always ways to do things. And we have to try and uh, live by the regulations, uh, which can change, but uh, uh, it seems we've found a way to do it this time. We, you know, we've done a bit, I think we've done four online gigs. Um, and you just find an environment that's big enough to uh, uh, cope with us. There's, there's like eight in the band, you know, so there just has to be enough space. Uh, for everyone's distance and that kind of thing um and uh, who knows I, I know it's going to be um are they saying now till the end of march or may this lockdown I'm um sure. well actually at this point no one really knows yeah yeah, yeah. So, we said, so we had to play it by ear um we uh we're trying to figure out a way where the others in the band can do some recording as well whereby i can send them stuff and they can record to it mm. uh, not everyone in the band uh, uh, does that does recording so if I can get our head around that it would make life a bit easier we're, 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 we're trying to put put together an album at the moment and you know oh, what that'd be interesting it'll be <laughs> it will be interesting mm-hmm. yeah I, ironically the stuff we've got some material that we've been recording we recorded um we did a tour of Belgium there last before Christmas no not before Christmas uh, the, before, the Christmas before should I say and I recorded all the sound checks and um, some of the gigs and with some new material. And then we, when we were in Paris, we were recording some new material and trying to write some stuff. So um, I have all that to sort of sift through. And uh, it, it certainly does an album worth in that. So that, that, that that's kind of something that has to be worked on at the moment. And then I have to try and find a way. We're trying to facilitate everyone in the bands to f- find a way to record just a base, basically, you know. Um, easier said than done. Because if you don't do it, it, it can. It's just. It's not so sort of simple to do. But that. That's the plan anyway. Mm. Uh, apart from that, we can't plan any gigs. We can't plan uh, anything like that. So we're just. We're, we're going to try and plan towards a, re- a release of some uh, music. Uh, uh, and that's that's the best we can do. And maybe an online thing around Paddy's Day. Keep an eye out for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll try to find yeah. that. So that's all we can do. Um, with that, you know. All right. Then. Uh, I mentioned the live thing there. Um, I know it's like a big difference between like a live audience and doing it on YouTube thing, but um, what does it, well, how does it feel like to you? To, I, I remember I saw you in the one in the 23rd of December. And yeah, yeah you were, you didn't, it wasn't live, but you did record it later on. Like, how, how does that feel like for the band to do that? Um, well, uh, you just have to think differently. Uh, I'd say the similarity was that 
when we gig, we, we often do, a, as, a, as I'm sure you know, a, a big kind of like a festival uh, mm -hmm. audience kind of thing. But we also gig in theatres where everyone keeps quiet and, and, and you know, uh, they're, not da they're not up dancing. So you have to adapt to that. So in, the sim in a similar fashion, you, you just have to imagine you're on a TV show and try and, and, try and uh, get the energy going. Um, we've done a couple of ones that were actually live streaming and I found they were more dynamic because you're not re-recording. If, if you're not doing that, you, there's always a chance you can stop and re redo something. Uh, you know, if it's not going out live uh, on, on the internet. Uh, but if it is going out live on the internet, which was the first two ones, I, I found our dynamic was a lot more uh, energy because there's no, you're, it's there and then you get it right or not and you move on. So that I think is, um, uh, can be the difference but you, you just adapt again uh you try and bring the energy uh even just off you get, get energy off each other um that's kind of what ronan does our, our singer you know and baron player he, he has the he's like this ball of energy he just keeps going yeah, I could tell. and that helps but that, that's a kind of he's like a conduit to, to kind of energize the rest of us uh to a certain extent he's always been like that that's his natural way so mm -hmm. um that can help and uh you just have to try and um do you and know I never actually need the audience reaction really you do and uh you do as well um mm -hmm. i think it, it, it's a different show definitely because mm -hmm. you respond to uh the audience responding etc and it's back and forth and that, that that always helps but you you know at this stage we should be able to uh uh, deliver our own energy uh, and uh, I'd expect that we all can because we're meant to be professional musicians so you have to you know it's like the football players playing um, without any uh, people in the stadium you know what I mean they, oh, they have yeah. to they, 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 they still have to perform you know so and it's going to be different when there isn't people roaring at you and all that kind of stuff so uh, you just have to adapt you know uh, we're very lucky that we can still do it there's, there's, there's bands that are going to definitely fall by the wayside because they're not um we we've always been looking with our band that we can play in many different types of uh people and venues you know uh generally our music suits a lot of different things and uh but if we were just kind of if we were a kind of a a, a band just playing a kind of a pop or a rock our options would be much more limited you know so uh having said that it, it again you just have to bring energy you have to bring energy uh, one way or the other. That's what I would say. Um, but definitely different. If if there's if there's a couple of thousand people in front of you, it's it's definitely a different energy. You know? But that's how it goes, you know. Uh, well, to me, I know I'm not a professional performer, but uh, I would actually would really love to like playing music, and there won't be any audience there because. So oh, really? Maybe, yeah, because um, because uh, you know you like. Because I get very nervous with the judge of uh, people's reactions in a way, and so does did it make you like less? I know you did this. You should play jazz hundreds of times, but did it like make you less nervous, it's like playing and doing that in front of live because you just didn't see the audience reaction? Uh, different. Uh, I get very nervous before any performance we do, uh, the recent ones because we haven't been doing it very regular. Hmm. I'd be worried because. Uh, uh, I'd be conscious that uh, we haven't been rehearsing or playing a lot. Uh, we tend to be uh, great when we when we're regularly playing uh, because um, we even before the lockdown we haven't we haven't been rehearsing much because it's just our lives are such everyone's got kids and other stuff going on. So you arrive for a concert and it's it's been difficult. We, uh, I had been like the whole thing when we were in Paris was to kind of contain everyone in one place so that we can rehearse and record. And uh, I was, that was the, our, the new method we were doing to kind of keep everyone in one area together to get some work done because otherwise it was proving difficult. Um, but then uh, when these gigs come up, yeah, I get nervous because I, I really, uh, you always want to uh, put your best foot forward and be as strong as you can. And that's difficult when you're not rehearsing. Mm -hmm. each other uh um but, and but then you use that uh, uh, any performer will tell you that well you either like the stage or you don't if you know what i mean uh mm -hmm. 
it's um, and I, I in any stage I go on, uh, I, I have nerves before butterflies in the stomach, which you you I know at this stage is part of uh, uh, the energy when you get out there, you, you feed it. It's a little bit like a drug. In fact, it is a drug. Um, but that that, uh, that 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 goes through you and gives you a kind of a kick, and that's kind of why you do it. Uh, most performers will tell you that. Uh, there's a big buzz um, going on stage in front of lots of people, and they're into it. It's it's it, it's it's a magical thing. But again, uh, it's not for everyone. And uh, for some people, I know it, would be, it actually would be a nightmare. And I understand that. Um, so, but I've been doing this since I was um, about twelve. My my father was a musician, so I, I kind of uh, it's I I got used to what it is. But I do I still get nervous, but I don't mind the nerves. I I uh, I spent a couple of years not being nervous, and that was actually a bit more upsetting because uh to me because I I wasn't particularly happy in this uh, at the time with the with what we were doing or whatever it was. Um, I'm talking about but some several years ago, and uh, I that was more trouble really because if I wasn't getting nerves I wasn't thinking about it, I wasn't caring enough in my mind oh. but that's just for me it's an individual thing um but now I, yeah I generally I do get nervous uh, I just want things to go right I want it to be uh I'm conscious that uh there's a lot of people who do it re who are really good at it and uh we're not we're not the young kids on the block anymore and uh it's not that it's a competition but uh <coughs> I'm conscious that we have to bring as good a show as we can there's no, we have no excuses, although often you give yourself excuses, but there is no excuses. You have to be as good as you can be. And uh, I get nervous sometimes that, that there isn't, we don't make enough effort collectively. But uh, again, yeah, we just use those nerves, you know. I understand what you're saying, though. It, it would be must, it'd be terrifying if it's if you're not used I mean, to it. You're making me feel better now. When I'm oh yeah, but but you see, it's, it's not. It's, it's you're, not. You're a professional here, and you get nervous. Yeah, but every professional would because, uh, and if they don't, they're they're a robot. You know, the whole point of the nerves, uh, it drives you to do something. Right. Otherwise, you could just do the same show every night, and then you're just like, you just don't care, and then what's the um. point? In a way, and you're just trying to make a living then, and it's just it's it's not good enough because it you'll end up kind of, we've had people who've left the band and I think it's something to do with that. They just didn't care about it enough or they, they whatever it was, they, they didn't get the right hit anymore. It, it doesn't feel right for them. So you have to move on. I always say to anyone who's a young musician, it, it, it's too, if you're lucky enough to start having big audiences, uh, that's great and all that sort of thing. But if it makes, if, if it's something you're uncomfortable with and you dread it, you're in the wrong business, you know? Uh, likewise, uh, the other side of that is that is that uh, if you're a musician and sometimes you have a lot of audience, sometimes you don't, and all that sort of thing, it's that's difficult as well, you know. You know, I, I tell you, you know, who I, I admire. I was talking to my daughter yesterday about uh, uh, you know stand up comedians. So yeah, I'm. I, I, did, I did this one with my dad. Oh my god! Like that that would terrify me. You know, I'm lucky. Now. I've done a couple of different types of bands. And I've occasionally done uh, some gigs where I'm just me and a guitar kind of thing. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it's um, you do it. Um, but to stand up there with just a microphone and try and make people laugh is is insane in my mind. That would that would that would that would terrify me. Mm. And I, you know, that'd be like. Uh, yeah, like when they're like no one's laughing. It's Quiet. Yeah, that would actually scare the heck out of me. Like, well, I've been to some gigs and and it they've tanked and it's just I cannot imagine anything more. That's like one of those dreams where you wake up and you're naked in front of your school or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's not everyone has that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I'd, I'd find that more scary. Mm. Um, but each to their own, you know. Uh, I think I'd go crazy if I wasn't like uh, we're in lockdown and I've accepted it, but uh, I'm under the premise that we will be back gigging because if, if I don't gig at some point, I know a lot of musicians in my my in the same position that, that it'll drive you crazy, you know, if you can't distract yourself because you're just so used to it, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, well, I guess, uh, actually, I'm just curious about, you know, the live one um, you did in the 23rd of December. I, I was wondering, what's with the fishies in the background? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. Is, is, is it kind of like your thing? Or you sound, you sound like your dad now. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, what, what's the reason? 
um yeah i've seen it before in your uh it wasn't on live on youtube it was the one it's a friend of ours started uh where you had fishes on even you had people dressing up as fishes and also. yeah but there's no uh there's no real deep premise there it's it's you know, it's we're just a uh otherwise you just have a venue so we have a friend called tom mesco who makes those as a, as a living he's kind of a sculptor and he makes installations around the country and all that and we commissioned him to kind of uh, uh basically make the place look a bit different we we're, were trying mm -hmm. to make it kind of feel a bit underwatery or something like that but we're kind of limited by budget and stuff mm -hmm. and uh by the setup but the <laughs> There's no, there's, there's no mystery, and we just basically wanted to tart the place up to make it look a, a, not, to, not just like a normal venue. You know, you, you know, we're getting to the point now where everyone, there are pe a lot of people doing online gigs, and it all looks the same. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, I suppose the effort is to try and make it just a little bit different, or just so that you're not, oh god, here we go again. You know, it's uh, and that's even why we do some of the Christmas shows. We try and make a bit more um of a show about it. Yeah, I went to your first one and I, I actually yeah. loved it. I, yeah, it was, I loved, I, it was so very Irish traditional. You're wearing all banshees and and um, it was just, it was very magical. Well, that's what we wear every day. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I've just changed. I normally in a kilt and uh, I have my horned helmet, but uh, it, uh, I just just for the day, uh, I just thought I'd, I'd dress down just because seeing as it's uh, for this. I know. Mm. It, 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 do you know, we're just. It's I, I I like to be able to make um, um a, a show different for everyone if you, if you make an environment, and you can't always do it because it, it just costs too much money. But by um having some sort of uh just a different feeling so that you're not just going to a show, you know, uh, it's uh, you have kind of up the game and like now especially because when people go to these big they spend a lot of money go see you two or one of these huge acts. And there's a wall of video, so you half of the time you're watching a film, and the other time there's sort of all sorts of explosions and things, you know. Yeah. <coughs> I don't mean you have to compete with that, but um, yeah. it, to to a certain extent, people will decide to go that to that instead of going to your show. Uh, so sometimes I think to to bring something that's just a bit different, and you know, I've always I've always wanted to do to run a, one where like. Uh, the support act could be a magician or something like that, you know. What, or, or some, what, what's that? <laughs> what's that? No, no. What do, what do you mean by why? why a support act. You know the way you, you'd have um just another band on before you. Uh, the, you'd have the main act and then a support act. Right. Support act is just a, is, is is a band that's going to be on before the main act. Yeah. Right. So, what if that support act was a was a magician, or or stand up? <laughs> why a magician to follow up things? Why not? Because it's it's you're just it's it's entertainment, you know what I mean. I just think that. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, well, you know, if if you know if if you had a, a good uh, comedian going out first and then making everyone laugh, you'd have a very captive audience. You know, you'd have a very I kind of. That's my dad to do that. He, he always it's, makes me laugh. So. Yeah, <laughs> but the, I, that's I suppose that's it's just another way of approaching it. You, you want to make a show. That's what I think. You know. I, I would, I'd be really impressed with that magician, you know, took the guitar out of the out of his hat. Yeah. <laughs> that would well, be, I would, I would, hard courses would pay my money to see that if that happens. <laughs> well, we tried <laughs> it a couple of times. We tried it a couple of times. In fact, we actually booked this guy in to do it and he, he never turned up on the night. I think he got, he, he just bottled. Um, He probably, he probably t overthought it, but, um, you know, it's, um, mm. It'd be a, it's a hell of a thing because you're the problem is with if if you got a an audience that's not necessarily because there is different audiences that go to comedians and they will sit there and listen but if it's a rowdy audience you're going to see a gig it's probably twice the work for a comedian you know but we'll see or m maybe a magic act you know is that what you're gonna do um when the virus is over <laughs> we are gonna do, love to see that we're gonna do anything we can <laughs> It's uh, when the virus is over. I I think back to I miss. Uh, Whenever it's going to be over, it's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I tell you, I miss going to get doing gigs abroad in different countries. That's that's uh, we were so lucky to do that um, pretty regularly. And, um, and that was my uh, next question. Like, what do you uh, okay. miss doing? 
work the virus uh, came and all that. Do, well, do you want to ask it though? Or I, I just said it there. So it's, I, okay, I'll say it again. Um, what I have here. Uh, what do you miss doing as a performer uh, before uh, the pandemic came and everything? And everything uh, was World War and uh, everything. Disaster. Uh, well, yeah, as I was saying, well, I, one of my favorite parts is that we, we get to travel a lot uh, uh, to places like uh, we do Spain pretty regular and uh, various other countries. Um, a lot less than we used to, but um, it's because we're older and it's more expensive. But uh, I, I miss going to a different place, a different country and uh, seeing how they react to the music and then just even um, just being in a different country is great. You know, that, that that's one of the biggest perks we have is actually um, getting to a different uh, country uh, regularly uh, uh, and um, just seeing how people react, you know. Uh, uh, for example, in um, I always said uh, uh, people will know if they know Spanish people if they ever go to Spain. Um, like I always say in, in Ireland or in England or somewhere that you play a gig and uh, it takes uh, the people in front of you about three pints before they start moving, you know, and uh, uh, if you go to Spain or somewhere that somewhere like Spain, if you, it takes three notes to play and they're up dancing, you know, it's, it, it, they just they just do it and that, that's that's incredible. I, I have a great fondness for Spanish and Spanish Spain and Spanish audiences, you know, because they're much more fiesta orientated. They just they just get up off their seats. Um, but that's just that's kind of a cultural difference. But yeah, I miss that a lot. Just generally gigging. It's 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 I've been doing it so long. And um, you would have, uh, for personally, in, in my month, I would have a couple of gigs, however many, and then I orientate my month around those gigs. So now I don't. Now, like everyone else, it's Groundhog Day, and you have to self-motivate yourself to, to, to get a bit of work done, you know? So hmm, Yeah. That's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm the same boat here. I, I actually miss uh, traveling. I was actually going to go to Spain myself. Yeah. But no, everything cancelled. Well, you have to wait. You'll do it. Was that part of the uh, <laughs> um, transition? Oh, no, no, no. This is uh, just the family, you know. Um, yeah. My aunt's friend was getting married there. and oh, just right. along, So just there for the fun of it. Uh, it'll happen again, you know. It'll get back to some sort of normality, you know. It's, mm. uh, it's a pain in the ass, you know. But I've got a... Uh, my 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 daughter's got tonsillitis for the past two weeks, and that's like. Oh, I, I know the feeling. I, I hate that. Yeah, so. Uh, no, sorry. Oh, <coughs> I guess she's, you for she's dealing with that on top of having to stay in anyway, so it's it's a pain in the ass. Oh, gosh. It's it's what you get. You get what you're given. Yeah. You know? Um. Yeah. It, I miss that. I miss. Uh. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a. <laughs> I'm not a, a hugely social, person. As in, I don't have, I don't really hang around with a gang of, you know, friends every weekend. So, uh, uh, but I suppose my gigging was a bit of that, between the band and 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 being in an environment. And I, I definitely miss that. But I uh, see, I do a lot of my work at home anyway. So I suppose I just have to. I've just got longer periods to work in. Now. Yeah, I'm the same. I it's always odd for me because see, I thought I'd be used to it because yeah. I I stay at home a lot and. Then I guess when they say to you, um, you can't go anywhere, yeah. it makes you want to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Well, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's the kind of, <clears throat> it used to be. I often wonder, is it a bit like um, living down in a remote area in the countryside or something like that? Uh, it must be similar because uh, that, that it's a lifestyle you get used to. You don't see a lot of people all the time, you know? And... Uh, me being in the city, I mean, you're, you're kind of more or less city, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I live trap lizard, so it's, I guess so it's you're, smooth. You're, you're used to going outside and there's people everywhere, more yeah. or less. So I think uh, it's a lesson for those in, in a kind of a city environment of perhaps what it can be like living in a, a remote area in the country. So yeah, I, think we I, know, I, I know some friends who do, and, and they, like the first lockdown, they didn't even notice it because really? <laughs> they didn't see many people anyway, you know. It just limits it in, in other things, but you know, we all live different lives. Oh, right, right. So, so that's why you miss traveling. 
Yeah. Um, so. Well, you, yeah, that's part of my life uh, that I have to give up for 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 the while, you know. Yeah, that, I to me that'd be a perfect job. Me <laughs> getting paid to travel. Yeah. To well, travel. <laughs> I'd say uh, I always say. It, it, and for most musicians, it, it's very you have to be very lucky to to reach heights like the bigger bands um, who earn a ton of money and are sort of to schedule. But uh, it, for normal bands who are existing, it, it's uh, it is very attractive from the outside. But then um, you've got good months and bad months, you know, and that's that's the hard thing. It, 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 they call it peaks and troughs, and. <clears throat> You have to navigate between the leaner times to the better times, you know, and 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 that's 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 the skill of it in a way, you know. And then uh, further on, if you have a partner like that, they have to be able to navigate you navigating, or they navigate themselves. It's 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 it, it, it's it's difficult. It, it, it's because it's not normal, and it's like uh, you're not getting a wage at the end of every week or any, every month. It's a different mm-hmm. kind of system. So it, it, it there's pros and cons, you know, and and if you last in it. It means it means that there's more pros than cons, if you know what I mean. Um, but it, it, you still have to navigate it, and you just have to kind of um, diversify, like we're all doing now in a way. But uh, it's it, that's regularly in, in in this music business. You have to do other things as well, you know. It sounds very yeah. exotic, and it is a little bit, but it's it, it's also kind of um scary, you know. Oh yeah, I'm scared as what. But um, we're trying our best. <laughs> yeah. You know, we must stay there. Um, I recently found it out that you won an award in the IFT. Can you tell me a little bit about the IFTA? Uh, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We did a a soundtrack recorded in this very man, a man cave uh, for a Irish film called Aract. So it's in Irish language and it's based on a, a story of a guy in a scenario it, during the famine. Uh, now it's not about the famine, but it's it's kind of based in it and it's like affected. Surrounded, by it. it's in a way. Excuse me. So, like the story surrounding them. Surrounded. Yeah, the famine. The famine is the environment that these people find themselves in, but the story is uh, it's not just about the famine, you know. So, uh, but it's uh, and that's uh, was meant to be released last March and it got delayed because of COVID and all that and um but it's been it's it's in selection now possibly for uh the foreign language film for the Oscars. So oh, and and yeah out. I heard you won that. Congratulations. Well, no um, no no we haven't um, won the Oscars. <laughs> oh no I know that but you no know, it's kind of a big deal in Ireland though. It's a huge deal. No it's a huge deal anywhere. But it's a win win you know win. So the Irish Film and TV Awards, IFTA, uh, selected it, and we won. Uh, it won for best uh, original music and uh, mm-hmm. for best sound, um, which is fantastic. Really, a, a big uh, achievement. <coughs> um, How did they uh, deliver the award to you? Did they just like? They haven't yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's lost somewhere. There. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in delivered. transit. It's in. It's I'm in still post. trying to find my delivery yeah. at this point. They couldn't, they couldn't fit it through the door or something, but. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, allegedly, it's on the way, um, but uh, allegedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, other people have won an IFTA and they're still waiting for it, and they, they won it about five years ago. So let's let's see how it goes. Oh, geez. But, uh, yeah, but so it, that, it, it's a brilliant thing for us as a, a band. It helps us with with uh, obviously PR and all that. But it's, it's kind of a, a mm. great to win that that that, that it, um, it was our first full feature film that we did entirely and. Um, it, that's so it, it has great success be, uh, so that, that it just means that it, it means we can hopefully work on other films and it, it just onwards we, we we would very much like to do more film soundtracks it's it's a great area to be in you know mm. so that was great and um it, hopefully it leads to other things and it, it's it's to be released uh, they, it, they have to see if it's going to be you uh, if that itself the irish film and tv people have selected as their contention for for oscars so I think there's 15 films to be selected. They'll only select a certain amount. And it hasn't been done yet, but uh, it's it's up for that selection. And if it is, it'll go f- to be representing Ireland as, as a foreign language film. So that that's huge, a huge thing, you know. So 
that's what that's about. And um, it's great, you know, it's it's, it's great for, uh, success for us, you know. Um, strange things happened in lockdown, you know. <laughs> that was one um, Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, speaking of uh, movies, as you know, you have been working with Cartoon, uh, Cartoon Saloon a lot. Never heard um, of them. The recent one, Wolf Walkers. Um, how how did that go in a way? Like, uh, did you did the soundtrack during the during the quarantine, or did you finish it like long ago? Yeah, we finished that um, well before the uh, uh, well the our our part was was finished uh, uh, a good bit before the the lockdown. These things like these big major movies, they, they just take us such a long time to. Uh, so many components in it so it takes ages for it to get to be put together and then um they then they wait for the proper time it would have been released at a particular time so that would be timed well for oscars and things it's released now on apple tv i think that's the people yeah. um how was the process there's a lot of people involved um, yeah the main... I, have, I have always been curious like um i have been I actually love the music that you do for Cartoon Saloon. Um, yeah. Like, for example, the Secret Kells and the Son of Sea, which is both brand new movies, by the way. I'll watch that. <laughs> and uh, it's, and I'm actually curious, like, how you process it in a way. I know this is off top, but just like a little bit. <laughs> but um, when you maybe saw, like, the story behind Wolf Walker, did you have the idea straight away what music should be in it? Uh, so, well... <laughs> I remember saying to uh, the others, what they do, they send us animatics, which I, I, I'm sure you know what they are, but just for everyone else. Yeah, I'm just going to say everyone else. It's, yeah, it's an animated it's, it's, storyboard. There's a script board, yeah. It's an animated mm -hmm. storyboard, basically. And it gives you the gist of where they are with their film. <clears throat> um, we, we, we found out they kind of, um, it's the 1600s. So I personally was um, starting to listen around. Uh, I was saying to everyone, let's think about... Um, I found a guy who played a hurdy gurdy, which was a very uh, popular instrument at the time. What's it's a hurdy gurdy? It's, strange, it's a strange. It sounds a bit like a, a fiddle, but it's got buttons instead of. I press the strings and you you wind it around like this, oh. and that that makes the. Uh, it, it's like a drone with different keys, and that would have been a, 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 a instrument of the time. So I I started searching around and, and and I found a guy playing one. I took some recordings. He didn't really. Uh, amount to anything but i suppose i was trying to think of instruments at the time uh that would sound authentic in a way so there's obviously no um electric guitars in the 1600s so that wasn't going to be in the picture you know if you know mm -hmm. what i mean uh. we wanted to make uh uh music oriented so we, we basically we'd be given a scene and then we'd, we'd start scratching the surface of what was needed for the scene um, if 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 it's a kind of if it's a kind of action packed scene, you just try and write something that has a bit of action or feeling to it. It's 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 uh, it can be difficult. Sometimes it works quicker than other times. And um, with us, uh, we, we there's, there's lots of us throwing lots of different ideas. So that sometimes you have to whittle down what's working, what isn't, and that can be a slow process or a quick process. Um, uh, do they like normally tell you what kind of music they want in the movie? Or they do, do you... sometimes give a feel. A lot of times with a the soundtrack, they'll give you replacement music, which would be music uh, that was uh, from some other group or <clears throat> that, that, that they just particularly like. Right. And then they would ask you, this is the kind of feeling we're looking for. Uh, and I actually, that, that could be quite helpful because um, um, sometimes... I, they, it's, it's I always say sometimes they know what they don't know what they want but they know what they don't want in a funny way um, yeah. and the hard thing when making soundtracks is to try and put time into to get create some music but uh, if they don't like it that's out the window so you have to try and keep communicating with them as you go and, and get a rough idea down and see if it's the right direction and if it's the right direction then you develop it more what we had we had a lot of music we sent them uh, scratches of, of kind of ideas and we w we would have sent them 30 pieces and maybe two or three of those pe pieces sort of um, stayed longer with them as an idea that they liked and we developed upon them and then not, not only was that happening but then Bruno 
Coulet, who's the, who's the French uh, uh, guy who wrote the score and basically was in charge of the soundtrack, he has his end of things as well. So he's he starts scoring to uh, like with an orchestra idea, and then th- there's a kind of a a friendly battle, should you say, of who who gets to play music over which part and. Um, the truth was that he's the boss when it comes to it. And then there was areas that just seemed more suited to our music, you know. And then we got together at the last stage to, he had composed some pieces that he wanted to use us as his kind of orchestra. Uh, and we went down and recorded that for a week. Um, it's it's a great process, to be honest with you. Um, it can be frustrating. There's a lot of people involved. And it's hard to get decisions sometimes, so you just have to kind of find. Uh, it's a, it's 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 just, it's a big process, you know. Nice, and uh, I've actually noticed from the movie that you had an appearance in it, which is <laughs> quite great. Um, who knew quarantine can make you so two D shaped looking there? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I, yes, I quote your dad. I probably went to the same pie shop as he does. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, and I, I hope he's paying you to get that dig in. Uh, they used... Well, he didn't look uh, great in the live thing when he was introducing you a lot. <laughs> well, they had a bigger budget for my character in that in that section of the film, really? I think. Well, they must have done because they used more paint. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, it, no, it's a compliment of the highest order. It's great. Um, it's kind of funny and strange, but... Uh, that's charming. You know, they, they, it's a kind of a nod to us. We've been working with them so long, you know, since their first film. So it's it's a great thing to be included in that way, you know. Mm. Yeah. I think it was great that they did that because you, I think you make um, <laughs> it's even greater, like with the music in it and all. So Thank you. More, like more live in a way, and because well, that's what music is live. So yeah, well, we, we get used for a purpose. We get used to be. Uh, a kind of um, more naturalistic because uh, you know uh, as opposed to just a big uh, cinematic score with, with strings which is beautiful and, and he, he writes mm-hmm. such beautiful scores and all that, but sometimes you wanted to feel a bit more um, music to feel a bit more pots and pans or realistic if you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, yeah, fair enough, yeah. that's kind of what they use us for uh, which is it's great you know it, it, it's a great overall effect you know I would love to I'd love if we had more uh, to do in the film you know, I, I would love to have much more input into the actual scoring, but that's um, that's to come. You know, and that's we, we will we will do that in our with, with other films as well. You know, in a film of that size, they they the, the amount of um, thought that goes into what's going to work, what isn't going to work. Uh, it depends on the success of the film. You know, so that, so it, it's understandable. Uh, there's a lot of work we did that didn't get used. I suppose is what I mean, and and mm-hmm. we have to accept that. That's just the way of the process, and um, that can be frustrating because you, you you really think, oh, I've done, we've done something here that really fits here, and they just don't get it or they don't like it, and and that's that's part of, of doing soundtracks as well. You have to mm-hmm. accept that sometimes, you know. Mm, interesting, very interesting. That. So, um, well, I think uh, that's it with the questions, but I would like to say is, um, um, do you have any thing to say to any other magician? I mean, magicians. Performers? <laughs> <laughs> see, I, oh, I, you, you were the same with my mom. I had to say performers because I can't see magicians. Oh. <laughs> see, I'm saying it now. <laughs> see? I had a, I had a, my a brother, a, a, a friend on, I knew who was um, an actor. Uh, he, he was really happy. He uh, it's a couple of years ago, and he secured um, a uh, an agent, a famous agent in Dublin, who's uh, she she'd be a bit older now, you know, uh, but known in the industry. And so he, he got sent up to do a uh, an audition in RT or somewhere like that. And he goes along, and uh, he's got a guitar for because the role was for a musician, you know. So he goes into the waiting room and he's there strumming his guitar, just kind of getting his head into the, into whatever this audition is going to be. And he sees people beside him playing with cards and sort of, you know, doing all sorts of little tricks. And then he realize, he asks someone, what's going on here? He says, what's the role for? He says, the, the role's for a magician. Whereas she told him it was for a musician, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he had any 
I don't think he had any tricks up his sleeve. So I think he went in and played the guitar anyway to see what would happen. But, <laughs> but you know. Oh my god. Oh, um, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> what was the question? Okay, so you get to my age and questions don't last long. Was there yes. a question? <laughs> Um, do you have any like comforting words to say to any performer who's like um, going through all this and um, do, you, do you have any words to say it'd be all right in the end or <laughs> like, or like something I don't I'm going to die to say, ah. um, <laughs> to say um, uh, you just have to keep your spirits up you know it's 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 everyone's in a look you know something the, the, the great thing about this is that everyone's in the same boat Mm, yeah. to a certain extent you know and um, we're all restricted um, even the rich and even the poor you know uh, mm. poor people have less of an op less options I'd say yeah That's unfortunate but uh, I think uh, for artists or cr creative people uh, this time is um is I think we um, really need creative people that um, they may yeah. not cure the virus but they are helping us mentally during all this uh, th there was a a story about um, a famous commander uh, in England or something like that, and, and he was they were spending millions on um, uh, they were spending millions on say uh, getting all the art put away somewhere uh, so that it, because of the bombing in the Second World War they wanted to save it and all that. And oh yeah, I heard this. Someone was complaining about to them like all this. I think it's called the mannequin man, the mannequin. Right. Oh, the monument. No, it, not not quite that. It was it was the it was actually saving existing stuff oh, right. in England. And uh, uh, anyway, th th he was being criticised over this. By you're spending so much money on, on all this. What, what's why are you doing this? He's, and he said, "What's the point? Uh, otherwise, what's the point of the war? Otherwise, like the the point being, what he was saving was the culture of the people. What he was saving was, was all these iconic stuff that is your culture or that is your." Uh, thing so yes the artists there is no you'd have a very boring world and a very yeah. you'd almost have nothing to fight for if, if 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 there wasn't art to fight for you know that's that's all very hippy drippy but I think it's true and I I think uh, what what is uh, uh, my mother uh, used to be an art teacher and she was a head of an art college uh, for for years and um, my father used to always give out to her for not painting she was a great painter. And in the past year, she started painting again, you know, so uh, because she was retired. But my point being is that if you're an artist, now is the time to make art. Now is the time you've, yeah, exactly. you're, you've been given time and an excuse to do that. Now, I, I'd be self-critical because I'm a terrible self-motivator. <laughs> but now is the time. If you draw, if you paint, if you make music, if, if you do anything, if you write, now is the time because... Uh, you can you you generally don't have any other distractions and and so it, it, it's it's an advantage from that point of view um to get stuff done that you, you always wanted to get done so uh the, the biggest uh there was um all every artist struggles from motivation or self-doubt and all that sort of thing uh an interesting one was uh, uh nick cave the musician he uh he writes books and films as well and what he did once he gave up his um bad stuff uh he said he got himself a kind of an office this is before covid and all that and he he tried to sort of set himself a kind of a nine to five situation and but what he did was um uh he'd get in there in the morning and he'd write because he says he because he says i'm a writer i call myself a writer so he'd go in and write and he says even if he wrote crap even if it's it's uh not worthy of anything you're still writing um so you're doing what you want to do you know and that's important so if you're a musician and you're strumming some chords and you're not inspired if you're doing it all the time you will eventually get your stuff or you'll eventually come up with something same with your drawing you know uh, uh you draw don't you so i i, I can imagine mm -hmm. i've been trying to you know i used to be an animator and stuff like that so i surround myself with art pads beside the television and some nice pens and like y yesterday I picked it up for the first time in weeks and I kept drawing and I, I came up I didn't come up with anything I liked but I, 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 the pra the process of doing it was important you know so for an artist you have to uh, do it you have to apply yourself to it even if it's stuff you don't like 
it's the whole point of doing it you know you're lucky to come up with something that's great at the end of something but um i think the important thing is is to keep applying and do it and now is the time because we're all locked down we're all in our caves and, yeah uh, i know the virus has been like taking lives and it's been a bad thing but at the same time it's uh well tell us to take life slow at this point um yeah for, for me i'm always busy with school and yeah. at the time of the virus it was my leaving cert not leaving cert um junior cert yes and i was always busy i didn't have time for myself but when virus when virus came and everyone had to divorce it i still did have to do my school work but i had yeah. time for myself to think for myself yeah which is which i think was kind of nice in a way it is good um the funny That's thing the same with, with you in a way uh, yeah, I, I'm more used to it. Like, I, I mean, half my life is like this anyway, is at home, you know, um, because I'm either out gigging or recording or I'm at home. I, I, my work environment isn't in some office somewhere. Or I think what a lot of people have had to deal with, a lot of people who are, uh, for want of a better term, in, in, in sort of a nine to five job or a job that is very regular, I think they've been struggling because they've had to deal well, exactly what you said. They have to. They're at home dealing with themselves or their family for the first time, mm -hmm. and that's a challenge if it's not in your, in your structure of life. You know, there's a lot of uh, talk about um, people um, stressed because uh, a lot of kids aren't in school. Half of that prob, the half of the reason they put kids back into school uh, before uh, winter was was so that people could get out and work nothing to do with the virus it, or it being a good idea you know oh i thought they forced us into make us have an education for <laughs> saying that you're still not you're still not you're, i thought they were saying to us you're not in school you still have school i thought that's what their mind was well, you know, <laughs> they, they did they weren't doing it because it was a safer thing to do because it wasn't um my point is that, is that it, it, it's to the, the workforce is at home hmm. So they're worried about the workforce uh, not outworking, therefore the economy of the country. And uh, but I'm, my point was that, that for a lot of people, they're not used to being at home and having to educate their kids, obviously, or ha having to like 24 hour people go crazy on top of each other. You know what I mean? So I think that's what a lot of people have to deal with, you know, mm -hmm. is, um, is, is, is just getting ratty with each other because they're, they're just facing each other all the time, you know, and, and that's probably new to many people. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I have been living with my family all the time, but, but now spending time with them, I thought, oh, this would be nice we spend time together. But now I just hate them because they're just, they just annoy me all the time. But that's exactly what I mean. You're just on top of each other and there's no escape. And then you wake up the next day and it's the same thing. It's the kind of groundhog day. Yeah, I remember um, somebody was telling me, oh, it's so nice spending time with the family. And I'm just there like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Well, it's hard to have time on your own, I suppose. That's, mm, that's yeah. Uh, so everyone had to change the way they they were existing with each other, and um, that's that's caused its own problems, I'm sure. You know, um, mm. even in my home, you know, there's me, my my daughter, and my and my wife, and we're just in each other's face all the time. And like, even the the, the two cats are going, "Why are you guys here all the time?" Like, it's you know, they're so used to us. So like, I'm even getting crap from them, and it's like, you know. The, one of them's not talking to me for a while now so you know but i'm sure we'll make up but I bet um, they're telling me all the time to be quiet <laughs> to music or something like that. that's what happened to me one time yeah but you know these these things they're just challenges and uh, it could be a lot worse and it is it, it's awful what's going on of course but uh, mm. uh we adapt you know and um uh if we all keep safe and things like that and hopefully that we get through this um then you know, we, we will have different words. I think, I take your point. I think people have learned a lot from this, you know, yeah. uh, to get back to basics of what's interesting in people. I think we also, <clears throat> uh, the advantage of people have had for years of traveling so much, you know, there's me saying I miss going away for gigs and all that, but people would hop on a plane much more now than they ever would. And then suddenly, this is part of the problem. It's how it traveled. It's how it, it's how this, this virus happened. Um, we take for granted how easy it is to travel from one place to the other and yeah. they're going to have to rethink how these things happen because once something like this happens, they have to be aware that it could happen again, you know, 
uh, in a different a different virus or in a different way, you know. So mm-hmm. that has to be thought about, and you know, it's all r- relative to ex. I suppose us humans have have so much excess, you know. Yeah, we're very social creatures, so it wouldn't yeah. matter everyone. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so. To, to, to try and think about that what and what's important and also but uh, you, you have to make do with, you can't go to the shops all the time like we used to in a way you know so you have to make do with what you have and not just expect everything you know so instant so perhaps that's a, a bit of a learning curve for mm-hmm. everyone okay um well that that's it with all the questions um oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your words of wisdom there. That's you're very welcome. Very, it was very interesting conversation. <laughs> and, um, yeah, well, you know, I hope it, I don't know if it ha- it's it's any way helpful, but it's. Uh, oh, it is actually very, very. It actually was. It's. It, I learned a lot actually today. <laughs> so I think well, I learned more than school <laughs> Tuesday. Well, so you know, I had to do school as well. So you know. Mm, yes, uh, I know. It's it's. They're driving a, me crazy at this point with the man emails. I'm kidding. Do you like doing it online? Uh, it's it's it's. But you're in, T- you're in T- T-Y, aren't you? T-Y, yes. Um, I thought I would love it, but I hate it. And it's just, yeah. it's a bit of both. It's you, you, you kind of like it because, well, the teacher's not like. Yeah. Do you know the feeling where if the teacher's always looking at you when she says a uh, question and she, yeah. it feels like she's looking at you saying, "Can you yeah. say it?" Yeah. Well, you're not having that anymore, but um, yeah. at the same time, it's annoying because uh, they're like, in some of the teachers I have, they don't know how to use the Zoom thing. And yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. like blurry and work they're giving us, they didn't explain it well. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I hate the work they're giving us. I, I hate it so much. My my daughter, Sophie's in uh, fifth year and um, she actually, uh, she prefers it this way, but she, she, uh, she's pretty uh she she tends to do her work i imagine it's difficult for those who who aren't i would have been terrible uh because i was um i was better in environment to do my work because i just get distracted too quickly um she prefers it because like you know the, the cold classrooms and the windows open and she just found a very oh yes environment. Um, i nearly had it yeah. i nearly had cold when i yeah and, and that's got to be hard so she prefers mm-hmm. it from that point of view um but it, 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 it it's it, it's it's human interaction is the problem. I think you know, it's it, it's important for people to have other people to interact with. Um, although we're all getting used to this, you know. And, yeah, uh, I just knew it was a bad idea to reopen schools because, of course, students are going to go to their friends and talk to them, like touch them, and help them. It, 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 I can understand from a, a government's point of view because they want to get the economy going because the, literally the economy stops and there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, from every point of view and um, it's just uh, the reason it's gotten so I, I believe that the reason it's gotten so um, bad as it has recently is because of the whole they sort of said ah, let's just forget it for Christmas let's forget there's a uh, it's going on for Christmas to boost the economy and it just you just suffer twice from it you know I don't think it's that big a deal to just stop everything for a while Um Especially when you think about ourselves and England, we're, we're islands. A, a lot more, you know, they, they could have stopped things at the border for a period of time and then try to get clear. I think it, it's, it's worked in New Zealand, you know, it's worked. There's more possibilities. So I just think that uh, we're, we're tied into a kind of an economy that needs to be working all the time. And that's uh, that's one of the downsides of it, I'd say, you know, that we, we're probably suffering more than we should, I think, because of that, you know. Mm. But that's just my theory. <laughs> <laughs> That's my little bit of politics for the moment. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about politics. So I, I guess yeah, well, right. the politics politics is really just a group of people saying they want something and, and finding out how to get it. You know, yeah, so. I love America at this point. Yeah, well, you know, it's another set of that's, that's kettle true. of fish, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Cool. So I have another I have another meeting now in ten minutes. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, sorry, I'll leave. Sorry. It's okay. Thank, thank you. You're thank you welcome. so much for your time and and this was this has actually been really fun and uh, and thank you for answering the questions and um, how's the drawing going? Uh bits and pieces. It was, it's 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 actually good actually. I I actually 
love it because I, I get to draw all the time and yeah. I and I discovered lino print. Oh cool, cool. It's cool. I actually Oh when suddenly. Here's one right there. Oh beautiful. It's um that hold up. That's great. There you go. That's excellent. Really cool. Really yeah, cool. Was, yeah, I discovered that from the wolf walk because you know they did uh, yeah, yeah. So. Um it's it's a great that kind of printing. There's um I, I, I was telling your dad um uh, this is probably you know, but I, I have a bunch of books uh that I, I can uh, throw you um uh, it involves a lot of um art techniques and stuff like that that can only help. I, I've kind of I have a compulsive nature of buying art books like I've, and I have nowhere to put them. So I actually that, you know, used to do that when I was young because I uh, thought the books would help me, but it did not. It's hard just, to engage with a book. Uh, what what is good is uh, uh, because I think I'd rather if somebody show it to me. Yeah. Yes, yeah, show it to me than the book because I do like reading, but I, I prefer if somebody showed me. I've I've used uh, I uh, I've watched I, I make a collection on um, Instagram of images I like and Instagram is fascinating because you get you see art from all over the world. Oh and, yeah, that's and, um, and uh, Pinterest like sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So that that's a huge tool, you know. And and I, if I'm trying, I haven't done a project in ages now, but uh, whenever I'm trying to get motivated, I just stare in front of my collections every now and then just to kind of get motivated by it, you know. But Lino stuff's great. I mean, you know, Edward Munch. Uh, who did the scream and all that? He he used to do a lot of line of stuff, and it's it's. I love print. I love the messiness of it. You know, there's the textures of the panels and things. You know, yeah, so much... you can um, tell um, when you meet, when the girls like in the village. You can tell with the line of print of the of the buildings and all, which I thought yeah. was fascinating. And then when she goes in the woods, it's like a, a rough sketch and water yeah. which I thought was like brilliant. Yeah, that's cool. that was on purpose. It, it's also it's 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 symbolic of um, nature versus. Uh, yeah, cities. Like that. At that time, uh, Ireland would have been uh, uh, mostly forests still, except for cities. And um, mm -hmm. the whole point of us was that they were trying to clear the forests of, because a lot of people lived off the forest back then. Yeah. And there was a whole culture, and there used to be obviously wolves, there used to be bears, all sorts of wild stuff. And then it really was the start of a, a new Ireland, uh, or new, they were mm -hmm. trying to make keep it under control um, at the time it was easier to travel around Ireland to get to the west of Ireland than it was true because there'd be bandits and there'd be yeah uh, so it's symbolic of that and that's that's what the drawing style is is kind of saying there really you know is one is structured one isn't and uh, yeah I, I thought that was really interesting how they did mm. that and it shows like how the worlds are two different worlds in a way yeah um, and you know this alleged progress it's still going on now you know like the rainforests in 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 uh, south america are to, are constantly under threat you know from loggers and from industry mm -hmm. and it's it's i suppose it's a smaller version of that it's just, yeah maybe they just need a crazy wild girl to protect <laughs> them and they're magical creatures and everything. yeah that's the <laughs> that world. always that's... works in every disney movie yeah it seems <laughs> to work in that world in any so, kids movie uh, <laughs> yeah well, you know, it's it's, it's uh, there's a lesson for each and every one of us. <laughs> yeah, cool. exactly. Well, I'll I'll leave you then with your other meeting. Okay, look, uh, good luck with the artwork. And um, if I get around, uh, uh, I'm not sure how to do it, but I, I have a bunch of books to throw to you anyway. There, there's some really nice uh, drawing books and things that that I, I that that would be really cool. Thank thank you very yeah, much. You're very welcome. Uh, and uh, good luck with your music. And um, thank you. And good luck with your home life, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's day to day. You know, every day is another day. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, and give your daughter kicking the arse for me. Oh, yeah. And stay safe. And uh, and thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Very You're very welcome. It's twice now. <laughs> Third time. Huh? Thank, thank you, then. <laughs> okay, on. Take it okay. easy. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.